Finding out more today about a really cool project that's happening in Cleveland, Mississippi. It's with pianos, and that means it's with music, which means we're jo- who's, Trisha Walker is joining us today on Good Things. Hey, Trisha. Hey, Rebecca. How are you? I have been looking forward to figuring out how this all got started since I saw you post it on Facebook with all the great photos of the different um, pianos that have been painted meticulously with great blues references or just Mississippi music heritage. So what's going on in Cleveland? What are the pianos all about? (laughs) Well, you know, I, I can't say it's an original idea. That's actually... You know, there is a global movement going on. If you go search public pianos on Google, you'll find cities all around the world that have pianos in public places. And it's just pretty amazing how that affects people, whether it's in a subway or on a street. You know, you'd be surprised at how many people just sit down and play. You know, I'm a big believer that music really does connect us in ways that nothing else does. And so I wanted to see if we could just pull together something local here in Cleveland. You know, we're all about being a music town here in Cleveland. So uh, I reached out. We partnered with the Delta Arts Alliance, which is one of our great arts organizations here, and uh, a local pianist who is also on the city council, Mr. Danny Abraham, he put the call out on Facebook for pianos, and I bet we could have had 50 if we wanted them. So we, we had to pump the brakes a minute because uh, we knew we could only handle just a few to get started. And so what we did, uh, the Delta Arts Alliance being you know kind of our arts agency out in the community, they reached out to several of the elementary schools and found sponsors for each piano. So we started with six. We've got six pianos out around town right now. And they reached out to various art teachers and students in our local elementary schools. And there were six different groups that took a piano, and they designed it. They painted it. They came up uh, on some pretty cold Saturdays and uh, got outside and sacrificed for their art painting these pianos. And then we just placed them around town last week before we had our 50 Nights of Lights uh, tree lighting ceremony, and already I, I see videos on Facebook. People are sitting down playing them and just having a good time. So they're functional, Trisha, right? Like, are they tuned and all? I mean, it, the point is not just to take a picture and post it, which is great. I mean, if you want to do that, or just bring a, you know, a bit of joy to your afternoon if you're out walking and shopping, which is fine too. But you can sit down and play chopsticks or whatever you want, huh? Absolutely. We want people to play them. Now, they are in relatively good shape and in tune, and we know they're going to get out of tune, but uh, we'll try to keep them sort of serviced as best we can. Each piano has a, a, a tarp in the bench, and we're hoping that people will take ownership. So if it's bad weather, if it's raining, somebody will just pull out a tarp throw it around the piano and bungee cord it until the rain passes. Um, and we know we know they're not going to last forever, but like I say, we could have a long string of pianos in the, in the wings waiting to be a replacement. But, yes, we want people to sit down and play, whether, whether it's only chopsticks or if you can remember Amazing Grace from when you were a kid or if you're a trained musician, just sit down and enjoy and play. It's that spontaneity to it, or, or Trisha, that I love, where you never know, like if you're just, again, you're out getting coffee or maybe you're taking your lunch break there in Cleveland. There's so many places to do that. When someone who is trained in piano just sees the opportunity, sits down, and now you've got a concert, you know, out of nowhere that just gives people the moment to stop and sort of pause and take in something that they weren't expecting. I also think just you don't expect to see, you know, the the piano in your common places there in public, uh, in the public spaces. And so just to see the art, to me, would take me a moment to stop and sort of look at it and enjoy it and then, you know, move on about my day. So I can see where this is just a good thing all around. I'm glad to hear folks are enjoying it. Yeah, and, and we hope, you know, if it goes well, if, if people continue to enjoy them, then we think maybe in the spring we may do another five or six in the spring and and widen our footprint a little bit and put them around town because they, you know, people don't buy acoustic pianos, I don't think, as much as they used to. Everything's gotten so digital and so electric, but it's, you'd be surprised. There's some closet piano players just kind of roaming up and down the streets and, you know, there's no pressure. There's, you know, you don't have to be great. You just sit down and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping I'll see somebody 
you know how you used to sit down with somebody else at the piano and do chopsticks? That's what I hope somebody will we'll get two people sitting down, like having a little uh, multi-hand piano concert going on. Well, we can go ahead and schedule that, Tricia. I think we're headed up there for the 50 Nights of Lights there in Cleveland, and I can at least pull off chopsticks with you. I don't know if I remember Amazing Grace or any of the other songs that I practiced night after night after night on the piano for so many years, but chopsticks, I bet I could, I could partner with you on that. You are on. I, we're going to make that happen, and we're going to video it, and we're going to put it on Facebook. <laughs> now I'm nervous. I'm going to have to start start practicing. <laughs> but you're right, though. I mean, my mother-in-law even put out uh, to all the kids this past week, she has a piano that's a traditional uh, piano that's just sort of been sitting there for as long as I've been in the family, and I don't know of anybody that's used it. And it feels like it was such an ornament piece to everyone's home for so many years. Everyone had a piano. And then it just sort of sort of shifted. It sort of faded, and it's a big piece, so it's hard to pass down. So this is right. a great way for other communities to maybe uh, think about that as well. I mean, was it hard to get together? You know, not really. Again, I'm going to credit the Delta Arts Alliance. You know, once we sort of put the idea in place, uh, the Arts Alliance made the calls to the teachers and the students and sort of arranged all that. Got to give a big shout out to our uh, public works guys because they're the ones we we had them all in one location. So we did all the painting in one location, and then the city workers came and put them on the trailers, and we delivered them around town. It didn't take but about you know an hour and a half to deliver them to the six different stops and place them on the street. And but of course we couldn't have done it without their muscle. So you got to have some muscle. You got to have a place to store the pianos while they're you know you're getting your students together or whoever's going to paint them. Um, and then just see how it goes. You know, we again, it was a real team effort, but I, I, I just had, you know, I'm one of those folks that has the idea that goes, hey, what about this? And then somebody else has to pick it up and run with it from there. So <laughs> I'm really grateful for the Arts Alliance and the city of Cleveland and our uh, our great students and art teachers who really put in the hours on it. Well, I also know that the city of Cleveland will make sure that if it starts to rain, they're going to get in a routine, they're going to protect the pianos and do all the things. And, you know, some of that should be have the opportunity for it to be a revolving door. I think if it gets to the point where one is no longer in service, I can see, I mean, they're works of art in and of themselves. I mean, if my mother-in-law's looked like the one that's up at Super Talk TV, I would probably take it <laughs> Take it in. So, I mean, you know, I think it gives it an opportunity to to continue its life in a different way and shine light on the fact that there's such rich history and music there in Cleveland. So congratulations, Tricia, and everybody who made it happen. I think it's a super cool thing. It's very cool, and we look forward to you guys coming up and uh, trying them out. All righty. Well, we'll see you sooner rather than later. I think it's coming up fast, quick, in a hurry. So I can't wait to get back up there and be with you all. That sounds great. We look forward to it. All righty. Pretty cool. If you want to see the photos, you can go to Super Talk TV. Will's got them up there. Also share them in the Good Things Facebook group. Again, that's just a great place to go and see all the positive headlines. I just love that it's a complete community effort to restore these uh, pianos. You probably got one in your home that nobody wants or for to pass down. I know my grandfather's was came to our house, Will, and then my mother had to find a cousin that wanted to take it and have a spot because homes, too, that are built today aren't built with maybe like a piano in mind where you think back to years before the entryway or they're in the living room. It was like you had a spot for the piano. And then we've had uh, a few um, guests here on Good Things. The the nice lady there in Oxford, not Oxford, in um, South Haven, excuse me, who's got the, the store. She built her whole store around um, a baby grand piano being able to be the centerpiece of it. You just... That's a lost piece of furniture. It is a piece of furniture. I can remember my grandparents, they they built their house, their living room, kind of around the piano. And it wasn't uncommon to be walking to the grandma's house and hear a piano going off. You know, her just sitting down playing and in between doing her household chores. That's what she would do is she would sit down and just play the piano. And when the grandkids came, was it that dun, dun, dun? Yeah, a couple of the grandkids were musically inclined, so they would learn how to play. That is not musically inclined. (laughs) But every kid loves, I mean, sometimes that's why grandparents don't always just acknowledge that they have have them. I mean, you hear it once, and then it's it's a joyful noise, all right, until you can sort sort of get it down. Did you take piano lessons, Will? No. My brother and I were not musically. I don't. It, it skipped a generation with us. All of my family could do it. I have several members of the family that are band directors. 
in, in local high schools. I, I, for, for some reason, my brother and I just never could pick it's it up. It's never too late to learn. I'm just, I don't, I've tried Are you skeptical? it. skeptical? I'm just not. Maybe we can change I don't mind. think I'm smart enough to do it or, or talented enough. What do you mean obviously. smart enough? You got to know. You got to read music. You got to all that stuff. You, it's just a new skill. Learning how to read anything else and you just sort of figure it out. Or you just can learn to, you can be really talented. I guess that takes talent and play by ear. My grandfather couldn't read music, but he could play by ear the hymns from the church. So, yeah, it's a different side of your brain. I don't know which one it is. Whatever it is, you either got it or you don't, but you could learn it. Or maybe you're skeptical of the piano and then you gave it.